The Racing Boys and Track Talk, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet and Olathe, with a $10,000 low price guarantee. Okay, let's choose up. I'll take Jamal and Tutal. You can have Chubbs and Skippy. Let's go. My ball. Okay. But you got skins. Not a good negotiator? You don't have to be a good negotiator at McCarthy Chevrolet. McCarthy guarantees the lowest prices on a new Chevy or we'll pay you $10,000. We guarantee there's no need to shop any place else. McCarthy Chevrolet, I-35 and Santa Fe, Olathe. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Again, Track Talk is brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet, hour number one, hour number two. Go out and check them out. Great deals on Silverado's right now. And certified used cars for as little as seventy nine ninety five. Kirk, um, MLRA and uh, ULMA are at LA. Boy, that's a lot to say right there. U ULMA, MLRA at LA this weekend <laughs> tonight, and it should be a great show. Got rained out. MLRA did at Humboldt last night. Yeah, with as we saw Ron and Ryan Whitworth at the racetrack last night after they got rained out. Uh, rare Friday night, they're not running their own races down in Humboldt, uh, but uh, that event got rained out. And uh, this is the first time we've seen MLRA down at LA Raceway. Am I mistaken about that? I haven't. No, they've been there. It's been a long time. It's now. been a while. So uh, big stock car show tonight at LA Raceway. Of course, they got the USRA. Modifieds and the B mods in action tonight, so it's going to be a great night of racing down at LA Raceway. And uh, I want to uh, offer my uh, condolences uh, to uh, Carolyn White's mother, who passed away here this past week. I attended yeah. the services down there it's on tough Tuesday to morning, and best wishes out to the White family. She was a big part. Uh, Verna Scherneman, who is uh, Carolyn's mother, she was a big supporter of LA Raceway and uh, did a lot of management of the farm, the Scherneman Farms, and and uh, helped out quite a lot down at L.A. Raceway as uh, Mike and Carolyn got that track up and going here several years ago. So uh, thoughts and prayers to the uh, White family. Uh, deep loss there, and we're thinking about you this morning. Well, I know that uh, we're going to take uh, the Luxor ASCS National Tour down to Humboldt, too. That's going to be pretty good. Um, Kirk, let's let me get to That's big news. That, is, that, is that on the schedule? That's in August, right? Well, that's what they told me last night, but... It's not on my schedule yet, but they said that we're coming. It'll be part of Speed Weeks in said August. said Tuesday night, right? See, and originally, and I'm looking at my, my planner right now. I want to pull this out and make sure because I knew I didn't have it written down. We were scheduled originally. It was to be announced that we were going to race at Jacksonville, Illinois on that Tuesday. But we're hearing now that we're going to be going to Humboldt. National Tour to Humboldt? Yeah, we got a confirmation from a reliable source, the owner of the racetrack. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll take we'll take that and run with it. But it's not on the official schedule yet. But uh, man, I can't wait for that. That's a show that I'm not going to miss at Humboldt Sprint Cars at Humboldt Speedway. Wow. Did you say Humboldt Sprint Cars at Humboldt Speedway? No, I said, did I say, it, it, I meant to say Sprint Cars at Humboldt Speedway. Yeah. Well, that'd be good. Now, awesome. you were down there when they had the two-barrel cars down there, weren't you, Kurt? No, I didn't go down you there You didn't for see that. that? I'm, I'm going to The Oil City Racing Series? Yeah. Two-barrel carb class? Too bad MLRA got, got rained out down there, man. Down. That would have been a good show yeah. last night. Oh, hey, Lloyd, if you're listening, man, we need somebody to check in with us and tell us about what happened down there and what's going on tonight. Who do we got here? Is that Bob? It is? Okay. Hollywood Bob. Hollywood Bob on the line. What's going on, brother? Hey, guys. Good morning. What's up? Hi, Bob. You know, same old thing, 15 years later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was good to have Kirk down there uh, last uh, last Saturday night down at the Speedway. That, oh, was, that was a good time. That was a great show, wasn't it, Bob? I thought the race was Oh, it was, was great. great. I'll tell you what, it's been a long time since uh, the last non-wing show I seen was down at Lucas, and uh, that's when uh, Jesse was still with us. And I'll tell you what, that was a... Uh, that was cool for me. I, I really enjoyed it. Scotty got on the mic and did that, so I got a chance to go out on the on the porch and watch it. And that was a, that was a good show. I really enjoyed the, the non-wing cars. He, he didn't spit on your mic or anything, did he? No, I, I made him put a hanky over it. <laughs> Scotty, he, he, you know what? I think what Scotty does best as an announcer is work the crowd. 
He likes. Oh yeah, he, he gets he, everybody in. He it. likes to interact with the crowd. I think that's what he does best down there. What's going on tonight, Bob? Let's talk about MLRA coming down to LA Raceway. Was the last time there? Let me guess. Was it 05, The last time they were down there? Yeah, it's been a good while since we've had that. We just never. I don't know whether why it it just never ever worked out very well i mean you know we had trouble with the crowd we even tried the ulma for you know a year down there and it just didn't work out so i don't know they're a little uh, i know mike and carolyn are both a little nervous about tonight because you know mlr is a big show but uh, i think it'd be a great show i think somebody wants to see some great stock car racing between that and, uh, you know, the A mods, B mods all going to be there tonight. I think it's going to be a whale of a show. Any, oh, any promoter's nervous when they got to shell out big money for a series to come in there, you know? Yeah, that's what I said from the past. It just, you know, Mike has always said, you know, boy, the MLRA show has always been a tough one for me to, to swallow. And uh, so, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I, I hope for – they they had such a great show last Saturday night and had a good crowd and, and – and, under the circumstances, I know Carolyn had just lost her mother a few days beforehand, but I mean, other circumstances, both of them had smiles on their face, and they was they was real happy to see everybody at the racetrack. And I and I know we discussed this a little bit. Like I said, they're a little little worried about tonight, but I mean, it's it's a a great night. I mean, the ticket prices on this deal are you know reasonable. It's uh, eighteen dollars for adults, sixteen for seniors and military. Ages 11 to 15, 6, and 10 and under is free. So, uh, you know, and you can bring in a personal size cooler. So, and the, the weather, I mean, my God, it's going to be a beautiful night to sit and watch some racing. You know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe having it on a Saturday night, Bob, will help. Uh, you know, Friday night, you know, bringing in a one off series like that, maybe a little bit tougher, even though you normally run on Friday nights. But maybe working this on a Saturday night will, will really give it a boost. Yeah, I think that's going to that's going to help a lot. Of course, there's a there's a lot of stuff going on this weekend, especially here locally. Yeah, we no doubt. A tractor pull at the fairgrounds. We got a big blues uh, festival in town this weekend, and everything else. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, and and you know we always appreciate everybody. They they've got a choice where to spend their money, and you know it's always nice for them to come out and and uh, you know support the racetrack. I, I'd kind of like to go to a blues festival myself. Is that tomorrow too? No, it's just they did a just a one year deal, a one a one day deal this year. It's oh. been three days in the past. This year it's just a, a one day deal. It's a barbecue deal and music, and they've got a car show and got a whole bunch of stuff lined up for for that. But oh, cool. uh, you know, yeah. but uh, go to the racetrack barbecue though. in the afternoon and still come out and see some great racing tonight. That's right, a little barbecue and blues, and then head over to the racetrack. That's a great combination. Sounds like to me. So oh, yeah. hey, Scott and Lauren looked great last. Saturday night. I hate to keep going back to them. I'm no diehard sprint car fan, but I mean, going back to the sprint cars, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, she made some moves twice, once under Mitchell and once under Chad down there, going down into one on the start and, uh, you know, put the old slide on and come up in front of them. And uh, she got uh, she got elbows up and was, she really looked good. I, I, I tell you what, uh, I, I tell the crowd out there a lot, that's one of the most improved drivers. And I don't, I'm not just saying female or right, male, right, I mean, right, one right. of the most improved drivers. She's really she's really come to her own. Well, she she's had a, she's had a lot of help from her dad. Obviously, she comes from a racing background, and her bloodline is going to make her a good racer. But then you throw in Donnie Cooper, who knows the shocks down there, and I'm telling you, that's what woke her up. I mean, the motor runs. We had a problem with the motor for a few weeks, but the motor's running now, and um, and w- with the help of Donnie Cooper and his shocks and making that thing get down on the track to the corners. It's been a big improvement. I think uh, she's going to get one, I think, before the year's up. You know, of all weeks, though, Bob, like I was just telling Kurt, we, we, we've we been talking about all you got to do is outrun Mitchell Moore, you'll get a win. The one night that she does it, <laughs> he runs third. <laughs> yeah, I know. That that was amazing. You know, And, you know, Mike's heard all this stuff. You know, hey, you need to, you know, Mitchell's, you know, every, if you win a lot, you know, you're cheating or something's sure wrong. You are. And Mike yeah. has been telling all these people, you know, there's other cars out here that are faster. It's all in setup. And Mitchell's so smooth. I mean, you can't take anything away from he's him. He's a veteran. And that's, uh, yeah, a- and, and he's very smooth. And, and But Mike has told everybody, you know, we, uh, I think two weeks ago, they tore Mitchell's car. I mean, it was in pieces down there. And, you know, and everybody's standing around going, well, everyone, okay, everything's all right. But, these other ones, you know, I think Chad's figuring it out. Don McGarry's been fighting it awful hard. He's and and there again, what you said, Scott. Uh, Tom last Saturday night had a horrible night. And I talked to him. I said, "What was going on tonight?" He goes, "All oh, the shocks." He goes, "This is a 
you got to work the shocks in this deal. And he said, I had a bad shock. And he said, uh, I'm trying to figure this out. So he's figuring it out, you know, like you said, with Lauren, uh, Donnie Cooper, you know, helping her with the shocks and stuff there. It's it's all set up. Yeah, no she doubt. She really looked comfortable in that car last week, didn't, uh, didn't Lauren? Uh, Bob. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think what she's just getting more acclimated to racing somebody. You know, she's good. She's been really good and fast by herself. She's really getting comfortable racing people now. And I, that, I think that's the hardest part for some drivers that are getting into sprint car racing for the first time, knowing the consequences of getting over somebody's wheel, and especially Lauren, because she killed Bruce Griffith's car down at Lucas Oil Speedway, hop on a wheel in one of his 360s. He let her go out there and practice and just absolutely destroyed the car. It wasn't her fault. Car stalled in front of her. She ran over his wheel. She hit the wall, destroyed the car. So she knows what the consequences are if you run over a wheel. And I think that that's the thing that's taken her the most time to get adjusted to is knowing when to put that slider on, knowing when to get in there and mix it up. And uh, I think she, as time goes on, she's going to get really comfortable with that. She's smart. She looks smart out there. On her the dad and her... Yeah, she's very her, smart. And, she, and as you spoke, she's she's comfortable now with other cars around her. That's and it. And you can tell that. And, yeah. and you're right. I think it's just a matter of time before, uh, you know... She's standing down there in, the, in Victory Lane, and uh, I think I think the crowd's looking forward too. So. Yeah. All right, Bob. Well, we'll hope, we'll see you down there tonight. Have a good one, and hopefully a big crowd to show up for Mike. Okay. Yeah. Uh, everybody, come out and see the MLRA. Uh, Going to be a good show tonight. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bob. Bob. Hey, by the way, congratulations to Josh Stevens, who was the winner of the War Non-Wing Sprint Car Feature at LA last week. Of course, we already talked about Chad Goff and Evan Martin. And the Speedway Motors ASCS Warrior Region, all the winners down at L.A. Last See how this Saturday. phone thing works, Kirk? We've got Todd in there answering the phone, so now yeah. people want to call in. And our brother's this calling in right me. now. I'll tell you right now, this morning, the most callers we've had on this show. Since on the second hour. Started doing the second hour exclusively yeah. on Racing Boys. All right. Lloyd Collins joins us now. Fast Track Photos. The brother, twin brother from a different mother. He won't admit he won't admit that because some people might give him some crap, but he's a lot like me. Now, come tell. on now, Scott. God, you know, give me a little credit there. I don't mind it. You know, it's not a big deal. Well, I know, but you know, I can ha- I can handle the crap that people put out. You know. No, oh, I know, but the thing is, Lloyd, is that you know you're a rebel rouser, and you know some people are rubbed by it, for, but for some reason you get away with it, and I get all the crap. I don't know. Uh, okay, that's okay with me. I'll, I'll get away with it, and you can get all the crap. That sounds fine to me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> i got to figure out your formula there. I so, was shocked when I seen Lloyd show up at I, Lakeside last night. Yeah. With a, yeah. You had a bunch yeah. of people with you, too, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, basically, uh, all of our crew, uh, Ernie, Wayne, Randy, and even uh, uh, Ron uh, Whitworth from down there at uh, Humboldt last mm-hmm. night when it rained out, mm-hmm. or rained our Lucas Oil MLRA series out last night, we all decided, what the heck, you know, let's uh, – Shag back up the city, and we'll go to Lakeside and watch some good racing. Yeah, so Lloyd, uh, did that storm roll into Humboldt last night at the last minute? It, it was at the last minute. Uh, you know, I left pretty early to get down there and uh, keep an eye on things and get, you know, my work done, per se, before uh, before the races start. But, yeah, we had one little late shower that, was a, that came through there last night, and that was just enough to, to do us in. Prior to that, it would have been perfect. We were just going to hold off and wait till it cleared out, but... Uh, I said we had that one little late shower came through, and that was pretty much the, the icing well, on the cake to seal the uh, deal. So, were you able to get cars out on the racetrack at all, or that? No, 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 uh, no, no. They actually, uh, we actually called it. I think it was about three thirty or so oh, okay. yesterday afternoon when right. they actually called the race. So, Lloyd, do you know that qu- the answer to the question when the last time MLRA was down at LA Raceway was it oh five? Uh, 11 years, I believe it's been. Oh, it's that long ago. Yeah, 11 years, oh. yeah. And, and how many times have they been down to Humboldt? Uh, pri- I don't know prior to that. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's been 11 years since we've been down there. To Humboldt? At Humboldt, exactly, yeah. Oh, oh I was, t- and then about L.A. Raceway, how long has it been for there, too? Not 11 years there. No. Uh, I think 05. Ooh, I think ooh you 05. got me stumped on that one. I, yeah, it's been six years, something like that. Yeah. Seven, six, yeah, something like that, something yeah. Something like that. So what was the car count like last night? And were the fans rolling in there when you had to pull the plug? No, actually, it was early enough. Uh, we only had a couple drivers that had rolled in. Uh, uh, Billy Moyer Jr. had rolled in, mm. uh, and uh, Eric Turner had rolled in in the uh, Pinnell uh, car. Uh, Joe Walking Horse had come in. That was the only drivers that showed up, because everybody else was pretty much on the phone with us, and we had them on hold. Uh, they were set and scattered throughout the highway, you know, on hold until we made a decision. And uh, once they did, uh, Ernie... 
and Ron got together and made the decision to go ahead and pull the plug, and uh, we'll try for another date, which uh, they got set. So, uh, What is the makeup date? The makeup date is July 27th. July that's, an, that's, that's a Friday, and uh, that'll be in conjunction with our Springfield date, July 28th. So it'll make a good two-day yep. swing for the guys. You know, that, that's you know, and that's the key thing is, you know, the, the expense of it nowadays is the travel. Uh, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to put these two-day shows together to make it worthwhile for these guys to, you know, that come from up north to go down south or vice versa when we're up north, you know, for the guys down south to come up north. So I won't be I won't be able to make that. I'll be in Chico, California. Well, yeah, that's what you told me last night. Well, you're heading out and won't be back until, like, what, September, you said, or th- something? This is my last weekend home until September. Man. You're not even going to be part of the show that weekend. you got to go from Chico to where? It's like a six-hour uh, distance between racetracks We're in that Chico, weekend. California on yeah. July 27th. We're in Hanford, California on July 28th. And then we're in Santa Maria, California on the 29th, three days in a row. Which is a Sunday. Yeah. That's being a road dog there, buddy. <laughs> so old road might end up getting the old dude, man. Huh? Give us nah, that. Nah. You'll be all right. You You'll think? be all right. We're out there having fun, you know. We all we all enjoy it. I've been out there, you know, on the road Lloyd. quite a bit myself Come, lately. Lloyd, but Lloyd. we all enjoy it. We get wore out with it, you know, but Lloyd. you know, we seem to jump back up and do it again. Lloyd, you're never gone six weeks in a row, bud. No, no, no. Never like that. No. <laughs> uh, since <laughs> never. we were since we were not able to be in Wheatland last Saturday night, give us a wrap up of the show me one hundred. Jimmy Owens says second straight down there. Yeah, I thought it actually it turned out to be a pretty good race, and I thought uh, I talked to a lot of fans afterwards, and uh, you know some of them even told me they thought it was the best race they'd ever seen down there as far as a show me race, and uh, it was it was damn good. I tell you, uh, if it wasn't for Jared Landers uh, breaking a power steering line, that boy was on a mission. I, he started deep in the field and came up there and took the lead. I mean, he went right around Owens on the high side, and it, like Owens had bricks tied to his ass or something. It was just crazy the way he was driving. And then for Blankenship to start 27th, I believe, and to come up and finish in the top five, I think he's what he finished third, I think it was, right. second or third. But it was just, it was insane. Uh, uh, it's an insane racing. You know, they went out and worked a track prior to that. They had an autograph session, you know, for the drivers, for the fans and stuff and all. And, and they was able to work the track and, and made for some uh, some superior racing, I thought. I thought it was just fantastic because you know me. I'm a hammer down type guy, you know, and that's the way I like it and that's the way it was. I like it slick. I want to see some passing. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you, if you if it's hammer down, lock down track, the passage usually they've done good. a great job preparing that racetrack here. Oh, right yes, now. they oh, did. Yes, unbelievable. It was great. It, you know, I there was passing going on. Believe me, you know. But it, uh, you know, Owens got out there a little ways, and uh, uh, Reddick came up there. Tyler Reddick, you know, he came up and challenged him. Uh, Dennis Herb Jr. was up there challenging him. So, you know, it wasn't a run, a total runaway. He had to. Uh, uh, he had to earn that, and uh, then come to find out after the fact, uh, when they went to put his car back in the trailer, I said, well, it wouldn't roll backwards for some reason, and that would go forward, not backwards, but they got to checking and found out that some of the quick change gears on the rear end, well, they had actually lost all but two nuts off of the uh, quick change oh. plate, and they quit some of the quick change gears, I guess, uh, some of the teeth on them had sheared off, and so Owens got pretty lucky even pulling that win off. Wow. Hey, uh, Lloyd, I don't know if you know anything about this, but I'm going to ask you because you're our late model expert. Mm-hmm. What, what do you know about Will Vaught and what happened with him and, and Brad Looney at Monette? Have you heard anything on that? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, the first thing we get, we leave I-80 and all, we're all getting texts and stuff, you know, what happened down there. But I guess from what uh, what I've been told, this is just through the grapevine, what I've been told right. was uh, I guess they was coming down, you know, getting close to the last lap and there was a lap car uh, that got in the way of Looney. Looney had to pretty much jam on the brakes, you know, to, to avoid hitting him. And, and Vaught came in there and, I guess, just uh, nailed Looney in the rear and took him out. Uh, you know, I'm sure it wasn't intentional or anything. Uh, but uh, then you know, Brad, did, got, Brad got a little upset about it. And, got out of his car and started stomping on his car, didn't he, or something? Yeah, he went over to the scales and got up on Vaught's car, started stomping on his car and stuff. And they actually... Uh, they pulled him off the car, and then uh, uh, he went back to his pits, and then Vaught made the mistake of when he went back to his pits, him and his crew member and some other people, whatever, I guess, had went over to Looney's pits, where you know, which is a bad, bad idea. He should have just kept us cool and stayed stayed over in his pit area, but R- rule went number, over there. Rule, started num- a, rule number one, Lloyd, stay in your own mm-hmm. pits. Exactly. Right. Yeah, not, exactly. Not the first time Will Vaught has been. But hold on now. and Listen, I, I understand him being upset if somebody got out and stomped on a car, especially if he didn't do that intentionally. I mean, racing's racing. It, right. If, if Looney, 
if he slowed up because of a lap car, and this all happened because of that lap car, and it was incidental contact or it wasn't on purpose, right? then I can't hold Will Vaught so responsible for his actions other than getting going out of his pits yeah, and going you, out in somebody think, else's uh, pits. Reputation precedes Will Vaught a little bit that Brad Looney just Where was that when he knocked the car out? Was that at Lucas Oil Speedway? When yeah. he knocked the car uh, yeah, off the yeah, stage? Yeah, that was at the show me uh, a year ago. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was when, uh, but, you know, that, that was, uh, you know, pretty much uh, uh, Voss decision, you know, and he did what he did down there and he got punished for that. But, uh, you know, uh, if Vaught would have probably stung, uh, stuck in his pit area, it probably nothing uh, would have happened. It, it wouldn't have affected him at all, you know. Uh, yeah. But since uh, since they did, uh, uh, Randy Mooningham had to take uh, you know maybe you know had to take actions in his own hands, and he actually suspended him for five Mars races and suspended him for the rest of the year down at Monette. So, hmm. wow, yeah. But it you know it is what it is. I mean, you know, when you get out there, these guys got the adrenaline going and. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's also nice to have a little rivalry, you know, I, I don't want to get it to, you know, it, it shouldn't get out of hand, no way get out of hand, but, but it's nice to have a little rivalry and stuff going on. Uh, I think uh, a little late model racing kind of needs that right is, now. Is Will all, Vaught, ra- it, all racing needs it. Lord. Is Will Vaught yeah. officially now the bad boy of late model racing? No. I wouldn't actually say that. No, no. I, I wouldn't say he's the bad boy. I mean, everybody, every driver, at their own time at, at the at the race is a bad boy you know sure. somebody's doing something you know to uh to upset another driver uh you know like the week before down in springfield with us with uh anderson and simpson you know i mean it was just uh, one of those deals uh you know simpson was blowing oil and leaking oil on the track and john slid in his oil and and got her when he got underneath him and he just you know, took him out. I mean, didn't actually take him out on purpose. You know that he slid in the hole and tapped him and took, took he turned him around. But uh, you know, these things are going to happen. It's just a matter of you know officials just kind of keeping everybody you know cooled down. You know, keeping some cool heads about it and stuff. Because you know, we don't we don't we don't like to you know our, our personally we don't like to suspend people or or fine people or anything like that. But you know, when uh, actions are uh, appropriate for it, that's what we're going to end up doing. Hey, it's uh, quickly at 10 o'clock, and time is about up, but I, I just want quickly, I-80, Alphabet Soup last Sunday night. John Anderson picks up the win. Mm, yes, he did. Yeah, it was a good race up there because this guy's had a very well-prepared track. Uh, it would, uh, oh, I don't know, hell, we didn't have really the car count that I anticipated, but How many there cars? again, I, I mean, we had 20, 28 late models up there. Uh, but, you know, the car counts, I think, uh, across the board uh, are kind of falling off a little bit. Uh, like I said, it's just the, the travel that these guys have to do, and the expense of the fuel and stuff, and it's uh, it's causing people to stay a little closer uh, hey, to home Lloyd, and stuff. But price of fuel is coming down. I think things are going to rebound, bud. I think I think they will. I, as soon as they get down there, uh, you know, it amazes me right now. You look at the price of a barrel of fuel, and uh, and it's gone. You know, or it's a barrel of oil, I should say. And I think last time I checked, it was below eight, 90 bucks a gallon, or below a hundred. And it's kind of funny that. The reflection of the pump is not as quick as the uh, uh, barrel of oil is going down, you know. So, but it, it will eventually will I think get back down there and uh, economy pick up. And once it picks up, then uh, it's not going to be so bad on a lot of these guys and stuff. The, the but, price yeah. of fuel takes care of a lot of things. Yeah, who would have thought we'd be celebrating three eighteen a gallon uh, fuel? Yeah, exactly. Hey, yeah, when yeah, it was four, when that, it was four dollars <laughs> a gallon, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's all yeah. relative, right? You know, it's kind of it's, it's kind of a brainwash type theory. You know, I yeah. mean, they'll they'll hike it up fifteen cents or so, then they come back down to two or three cents, and people think they're getting a deal. Right. You know, and then the next thing you know, it's back up fifteen more cents, back down two or three cents, and and it's just kind of I don't know, it's kind of a psychological thing. I think they're playing. You know, but uh, our government me, needs to do something and step in there and regulate. The government's already done too much already. Yeah, I agree, Kirk. Oh, government yeah. has done too much. All right, on There's that. too much regulation in government. You're, you're, you're breaking up on me, Lloyd. I think yeah, you I got bet a, I am, yeah. I think you got a bad signal there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> you and your regulations, Scott. Oh, my God. I'm, we're going to convert you one of these days. You know that, don't you? Uh, I don't know if you'll ever convert me, bud. <laughs> we better close the show. Uh, on that note, we're going to get in trouble. We're going to get out of here. Lloyd, thanks so much, man. Have a good show down there. All right, buddy. Yep, we're at L.A. tonight, so I invite everybody to come down. It'll be a good show, so... Come down to L.A. tonight, and uh, and then don't forget our makeup date uh, for the Humboldt race is the 27th, and then the 28th, we're at Springfield the following night. So, All right. God bless you, brother. See you later. All right. You too. Thanks, Bye-bye. guys. Lloyd Collins, my brother, twin brother, different mother, except for our beliefs and politics, a little bit different.
You're you're more in line I'm with, with him. Lloyd on that. Yeah, I know you are. All right, of course, of course, everybody. Run the theme the... music, Kirk. I'm ready of to get out of here. Of course, I'm not with you on that, right? <laughs> I just want to believe that everything's going to be all right. Oh, I'm optimistic. No, you're not. Right. You're the biggest pessimist I know. Long as I'm not I, an optimistic long person. As I, long as I be able to see again. You're the be least okay. optimistic person I know. Down. No. Well, maybe not. But you, you're up there. All right. Run. Are it. we done? We're done. All right. I want to thank Todd for taking the phone calls in there. Todd Surprise, you'll see him out at the track doing uh, interviews with uh, wrong thing there, Kirk. You can't you can't see the sport sounds, can you? But Kirk Elliott having a little problem with his eyes this week. He's Hang gonna on. be all right. He's gonna rebound. Hang on, he says. Here we go. There okay. you go. How many how many things you have on there anyway? You should only have like two or three, right? There we go. Goodbye well, I was for now. Playing the intro again. Why? When the show's over. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to I-35 today. Hey, thanks, everybody that called in, man. That was pretty cool. And uh, we we'll hope that that would be a habit for people here in the second hour because we love phone calls. Again, thanks, Todd Surprise, Kirk Elliott. I'm Scott Trailer. Today's show has been brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet. Don't forget, great deals. They've got 75 Silverados over there, HDs. This is a perfect time to buy that Silverado right now. Don't forget, you can buy a certified used car for as little as $79.95. Get out there, tell them thanks for supporting the Racing Boys and everything they do. And we'll see you next week here on Track Talk. Do you-